Elisha in the speaker. Mm. Our dear and loving Father, I want to thank you once again for this morning, for this cup meeting, for the programs that have passed by. As we now stand to hear more about stewardship, may you bless the speaker so that we might hear more from you. Oh, Jehovah Lord, I thank you for us believing and trusting in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I still want to take the, the number. Uh, let me see how many have come, uh, members of Gong Road, by show of heart. When in the Bible study, we are only seven members. Now I'm taking census so that I... Yeah? We increased. <laughs> I didn't see us increasing. Ah, my sister came in, but she is not a member of Gong Road. She is a good friend of Gong Road. So there's one, two, three, four, five, at least, uh, <laughs> at least, at least have come. Let us pray. Uh, our Father and our God in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity one more time to look at stewardship. We cannot truly worship you without recognizing we are stewards. And I pray again, we recognize who we are in this ministry, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, the, the program that has just uh, ended, I know the uh, pastor was talking about uh, delegation, but I strongly believe there are some duties we can't delegate. Some duties completely can't delegate, and the best example is Christ. When it came to dying for us, he did not delegate. Uh, and the topic I'm going to handle now in the stewardship, it will show us also, because steward also being, you become a leader as a steward, you show other people to become stewards. There are some aspects that you see in the short presentation that you cannot delegate some items. However much you would like to, there are some things you must do yourself as a leader. Let us, because I was handling Abraham in the morning, uh, this is not what I had planned to handle for stewardship, but I'm being compelled uh, to continue with Abraham, but in another line of stewardship. So turn with me to the book of Genesis. We want to study the Bible in stewardship. Uh, and the, the, because I realized that you people you are making some presentation. So for this one, you can call it the giver or the gift. The giver or the gift. That one. Simple. The giver or the gift. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. We see some stewardship aspect in that chapter. And the Bible says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, when we say, when we saw that uh, um, uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, was given, when we see Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king of Babylon, was given, when we saw, we have not seen, but we know uh, Belshazzar was given, and when we know the members of Ngongrond and our guest choir, we have been given. What are those that we are given? Give me another word. They are gifts. So we are given gifts. Now here, look at verse 1 again. Let us look at verse 1. The Bible says, after these things, which things? Is the question that we need to ask. Remember in the morning we are handling how it is God who called Abraham and they prompted him with a child. Abraham, we have not seen in the scripture praying for the child prior to Genesis chapter 12, when God says, I will make of thee a great nation, in reference to the children. And in verse 7, he says, to thy seed will I give this land. And then Abraham builded an altar to the Lord that appeared unto him. That is Genesis 12, verse 7. So it is God who came up prompting the gift of the child to Abraham. 
chapter 11 verse that the bible says now Sarah Abraham's wife was barren she had no children but in between there we don't see a prayer if it is there it's not recorded we don't see a prayer of Abraham requesting for what for a child are we together so God in his own wisdom and in his own providence he calls Abraham and he promises him a child. And you know there are several things that happened after that. Uh, he moved, of course, as we are seeing in the morning, by faith he moved, he went to the land of Canaan and he made it to the land that he, was, uh, he had decided to go. And when he was there, there was famine. He went to Egypt and he sojourned there. And you know how he cheated and he said that Sarah is my, 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 my sister. And for, you, for sure Sarah was his sister. They were of the same father but of different mothers. And then she, he says, uh, when come to chapter 20, that's when he says, oh, yeah, Sarah is my sister, uh, uh, but not of the same mother, and she became my wife. Now if she was your sister, who is she now? Your wife, that's it. And when God addresses this, he does not say your sister or your former sister. You know, if my wife was my former sister in Christ. Now she is not. She is my wife. She will become my sister again when we go to heaven. Period. For now she is my wife. So I cannot keep on telling her, oh, you're my... No, she's not my sister. She is my wife. But when you go to heaven, since there is no marriage, you become what? My sister, period. Before you got to marriage, she was my sister. In Christ, of course. So let us not get confusion of these things. Now, this one happened. Then after that, there is something else that happened. You know, after that, cheating and he was uh, changed away. Chapter 13, when we read verses 1 and 2, the Bible says that Abraham went out of Egypt with his wife. And all the substance and the Lord went with him into the south. And verse 2, the Bible says, And Abraham was very rich in gold, in silver, and in cattle. He was very rich. And then after, uh, you know, that chapter, that is where they had issues with the nephew. And I remember, this is the mistake of Abraham, because he was told not to take any one of his family. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, you get to the of the country and from the kindred and from the father's house. So going with the Lord was a baggage. That's why there are differences in chapter, chapter 13. They quarrel that. Then um, the Lord is taken captive in the following chapter, chapter 14, taken captive. And Abraham goes there. He takes 316 uh, 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 trained servants. He pursues five kingdoms. He conquers them and he brings them. And when he brings them, now he has come to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to his home. And when he is there, he is worried. What if those kings, they come together and they attack me? It is when he is thinking these, now verse 1, chapter 15. Now we are together. I've given you the backing ground. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, What did they say? Fear not. Uh, yesterday, how many were there when we were doing the... the Stewardship, other than the choir, the other members, how many were there when they were doing the stewardship? Raise up your hand if you are there. Mine is up because I was there when we were doing it. Okay. So all oh, others are strangers in Jerusalem. What was the topic? The stewards, worship, and what else? And fire. So if there is fire, and you know, for me to become a steward and to worship, if there is a fire, there is something that I should do away with. That thing is called fear. I should not fear the fire. I shouldn't fear it. The only fire I should fear is the fire of heaven, or the fire of God, because that one it, no one can quench. But the fire of the world here, I should not fear it. That one I should not fear. So now, God is telling Abraham, do not fear. <laughs> do you know how many people die <laughs> before, they, before they die? Cowards. That is why the Bible says some of the people that do not go to heaven are the cowards. I'm not saying go unboxing everyone so that you prove you are courageous. No, that's not what I'm saying. But there are some things that they should not make your heart to tremble even an inch. Some of the things is to be cured because of your faith. Christ even told us, be faithful even unto death. So we know he will allow people to be cured because of their faith. So that one we know. And we cannot ask God, why are you? And he told us to be faithful even unto death. So God is telling him, fear not. Now he says, are we reading verse 1 together so that you can see this thing? He says, fear not, I will be thy shield. I will shield you from, in the event that these kings come together and they want to, to come and attack you, I will shield you. And then he says something that I want us to look, and I will be thy exceeding great reward. 
You need to hear, and it is my mistake. If you had it, you would have said amen. Let me hear, my brother, which version do you have? King James, let me hear another version, what it says, verse 1. Another version. Another version, verse 1. Genesis 15, verse 1. Are we there? Are we there? We all have King James. <laughs> After these things, yes, uh-huh, 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 you are reward. Uh, what do you understand? I will be the assured you are reward. Who? What is, what is the kind of reward that this Abraham is getting? From your version. Who is the reward? Or what is the reward? No, uh, 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 not you, my sister. The system behind there who is reading that version. Who is the, what is the reward or who is the reward? Huh? Read again, my sister. I request you read again. Yes. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you are reward. Uh -huh. Let me hear from us. Yes. Uh -huh. This one is at least closer. Who is the reward? Or what is the reward? In that verse. How do you understand that verse? Yes. Uh -huh. So it is God who is the reward to Abraham. Thank you. There it goes. King James says, I am thy shield and thy... I, God is speaking. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham, does he say yes? Amen. Thank you, God, for this. Let us see the next. And the Bible says, And Abraham answered and said unto him, Lord God, behold, I go without what? Oh, no. He says, Lord God, where do thou give me seeing I go childless? God says, I, God, I am your, your gift. I, God, I am your reward. And Abraham said, no. I want a seed. I want a child. Remember the topic is giver or the gift. So what does Abraham value most? The giver or the gift? The gift. What do we value most? Do you know many a times we talk about more about heaven than the home of heaven? Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Look at your conversation. You, we talk more of heaven more than the what? The, hen, the home of heaven. We do that. We do that. In other words, Abraham is saying, I don't want you, God, the giver. I want your gift. And he said, behold, to me you have given more seed, and the one born in my house is my hair. Because in verse 2 he says, and the still one of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. You have not given me a seed. You have not given me a gift. So Abraham, like every other person, is concerned with the gift and not the giver. In other words, we have a relationship with the gift, and we have no relationship with the giver. Have you seen a small, a little child? You come with a, with, a, with a sweet or something and you give it to this child and she take it, this child take and run away with it and forget about you. Have you seen that? Yeah. Uh, let me give you a better example. You come with some meat and you give a, a cat. If you have a cat, you have a pet called a cat. Of course, I'm not calling people cat, but I'm giving an example. You give it to cat. What does the cat say? Tell you, thank you. It is that same. Mm. Try to put your hand there. What will happen to your hand? Why? But when, when it finishes eating, you, then you hear this and meow. It's not in, after you ex, I, I search, but the gift you give. So most of us in the stewardship, we have no relationship with God. We have a relationship with the gifts. True or false? We can't deny that fact. And this is what God wants to do away with. So that we can have a relationship with him and not the gifts he gave to us. 
Listen, and when you are so much after the gift, you can always go out of your way and do something that will bring pain to you and to the people near you. When you are so much after the gift, so much after the gift, you can do something, something that is very funny. Why am I saying that? Because, you know, after that, after that, even, even uh, uh, you know, after that, then God told him, no, this is not going to be true uh, uh, from your own boys. This is what I said from your own boys. You shall have your own hair. And then he told him, go out. He went out and told him, count the stars. And of course, he told him, so shall your seed be. And the Bible says that Abraham believed and it was counted for him for righteousness. Then God again called him and told him, you go out and do this. And then God, uh, Abraham still asked him, how shall I know? Because God is telling him, I'll give you this lad. Then Abraham says, how shall I know you shall give me this lad? That is chapter 15, and just paraphrasing because you know the story. Then he told him, give me an IFA three, holes, uh, three years old, and a shingo to three years old, and give me a tattoo and a half, and a, and a half, and you bring this, and what you're supposed to divide, and what you're not supposed to divide. Then you, in that chapter, we see God making a covenant. And when, after making the covenant, you go to the next chapter, chapter 16, the Bible says, after 10 years of staying in the land of Canaan, Sarah came and told Abraham, you know what? God has restrained me from bearing. Maybe, actually told him, go to my handmaid. Maybe I shall have children by her. And the Bible says, and Abraham hearkened unto the voice of Sarah. Remember, he is so much after the gift. He hearkened after the voice of Sarah. And the Bible says, and Sarah took, I want you to see this marriage that was being conducted by the wife. Man, you are married uh, and your wife comes and gives you a wife. You know you take it because it's a wife giving and <laughs> you know she knows she has given. He took and when he took, he went into her, she conceived. And when she conceived, now the Bible says, she despised Sarah. And when she despised Sarah, there was pain in the house. Remember that's what I told you, when we are so much after the gift, there will be pain. There was pain in the house. And Sarah turns around and says, let this wrong be upon you. And Sarah is accusing the husband. There's somewhere I want to go. That's why I'm not reading these things keenly. So accusing the husband, and he says, let the, the Lord judge between me and you. And if God had come to judge, Sarah was right. Because Abraham was the leader, and did not do the leadership properly. He delegated the leadership to the wife at this moment. And because he had cheated and said Sarah is his sister, so Sarah also called him my brother. And so it is easier to give your brother a wife than giving your husband a wife. Am I right? So he was, she was giving a wife to her brother. They were brother and sister, yes, but they were already married. So then after that, you know what happened? Then Abraham says, behold, she is on your hand. Do unto her what it pleases. And the Bible says, and, when, and Sarah dealt hard with Hagar, and Hagar fled. It is when she was fleeing, the angel of the Lord comes and says, Oh, Hagar, the, the, the servant, the main servant of Sarah, where are you coming from and where are you going? How comes the angel knows who she is but doesn't know where she is going? She wanted to have that. And then he said, Oh, you know, I'm fleeing from the hands of my master. The angel told her, Go back and submit yourself to your mistress. The Bible does not say, go and submit back yourself to your co-wife. So Aga and Sarah, they were never co-wives. One was a mistress, the other was a handmaid. Is that one clear? Is that one clear? Yes, they were never co-wives. Then of course, when now she gave, she gave birth. When you look at chapter 16, uh, verse 16, uh, and 17 verse 1, there's a period lapse of 13 years. Either the writer is not telling us, or God kept quiet with Abraham. Then after that, the story again picks. And then you see, Ishmael was 13 years when Isaac was born, and at one point, uh, Sarah saw uh, uh, Ishmael mocking uh, Isaac. And Sarah said, let him go. And it was a problem with, uh, with Abraham. And God said, whatever Sarah says, Yes, it has to be done, chapter 20, 21. And there, he had to chase him the way. Then after that, now we go to chapter 22, so that we look at some things I was saying, and some things we can't delegate. And from here, I need you to talk. And the Bible says, It came to pass after these things that God tempted Abraham. 
And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And God said unto him, Take now thy son, Gilead, thy own son Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains that I shall tell thee of. Let me ask you this question now. We know that wherever Abraham was, this is his tent, the next is an altar. This is a tent, wherever he used to go, he would go, he would always move with the tent, but not the altar. He would put a altar and a tent. When he's moving, take the tent, leave the altar. So wherever he was, there was an altar. Why does God tell him to go to the land of Moriah? And not to offer Isaac upon one of the altars. I need an answer. Why? Sorry, I come up again? All right. Let me come up again, Sister Lucy. This is Abraham's house or tent. And this is Abraham's altar. That was his custom. Wherever he goes, he has a tent, he has an altar. But in the event that he moves from that point, he will carry the tent, but leave the what? The altar. So that when people come, they see, oh, Abraham was here. This is the altar. This is a sign that he was here. Then God comes unto him, and he tells him, now I want you to offer your son Isaac, but not this altar, not this one here. Not this one here where it's near to your, to, your, to your house. You go to the land of Moriah. Upon one of the mountains that I shall tell thee of, you offer him there for a burnt offering. Do you know what a burnt offering was done? You, you go and prepare an altar, then you take the victim, you put the victim on, the, on top of the altar, you take the knife and you bring it slowly, not, the, not with haste, you bring it slowly, and you slaughter the altar when the altar is, uh, when you slaughter the victim when the, the victim is looking at you so they can see the effect of your sin and then from there you lit the fire and the thing is burnt whew, completed to the ashes. So the question I'm asking, why is God telling Abraham to go to the land of Moriah and not to offer there? And he has an altar. Oh, you are telling me you are reading the story for the first time. Yes, Sister Lucy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. 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 But the son was offered willingly. So he could, the, son would have, the son would have told mom, mom, if God had sent her be offered, please don't come in between me and my God. He would have said that. There's nothing mother would have done. And again, the altar was there. You know, you know the altar was there. The mom would not have prevented the altar being, from being prevent, uh, uh, prepared. You see? But that's a good one. That's a good one. Something else? Yes, my sister. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Offer him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Even uttering him to offer in the out, that altar near his tent is still a trial. It's still a test. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you remember the morning presentation? What was the what was the topic? <laughs> you are very good at forgetting <laughs> and blessed at keeping quiet. 
<laughs> eh? It was intentions or decisions. So my sister is bringing a critical point. You know, you are used to this. This is your tent. This is your altar. So you go to the land of Moriah. It is a journey of three days. So that in the process of going, you start with the intention. Will you make the intention become a reality, become a decision or not? So that when you move for those three days, you decide fully what you're going to do. But if it is here, we would have accused Abraham. He was not given time to decide. He did it emotionally. He took the son and he slaughtered him. So he said, go. As you go, decide. And this is what you do as a church. Today I'm coming to offering the one you don't like. Next month we're having fundraising. <laughs> Brother Jared is there. He has been crying. We want to have somewhere of our home to worship. So next month we are coming with an offering. You are given time to decide. And when you don't bring anything, you decided not to bring. And God will respect your decision. That's how God is. He will respect your decision. You will respect mine. That's how he is. He is very fair. Whatever I decide to do, he respects. But even if he respects some of the decisions I make, they do not honor him. So, Abraham, go. That lad, he go. And then look at verse 2. The Bible says, he rose early. Is it verse 2? He rose early in the morning. What does it, what do you understand it by rising early in the morning? Let us dissect these verses. Let me ask you this question. This is what I keep on asking my congregation. Is it the first time you are reading this story? Then I should be seeing hands. You're not trying. My sister is saying trying and she has an answer. You know, I want this. At least I want hands. Someone say, let me try. You make a mistake, you move on. At least you are talking. You know, I'm not alone. Yes, my own. You always come to my rescue. God bless you. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, no, he was not told. He rose. Uh, read, read. Let us read this one first. <laughs> he was not told what time to go. <laughs> he was told to go. It is himself who rose early in the morning. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thank you, my head. Someone else? I think now you have gotten courage. Yes, yes, sir. Uh huh. In deciding to prioritize. Uh huh. That's a good one. Another one? Another one? Yes, yes, my sister. Over there. Yes, yes. God bless you. It is a sign of obedience. Simple, clear. It is simple. Remember, for those who are here in the morning Bible study, this is connected. Because we read in the morning in the book of Hebrews, chapter, chapter 11, verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go to the land that he should afterward receive for inheritance, he obeyed. And he went not knowing whether, whether he went, he obeyed. So Abraham or Abraham rising early in the morning, it is a sign of obedience. It's a sign of obedience. An obedient steward. Remember, my sister put it, and it is in the scripture, Abraham, God called, tested. You know the one that King James uses is tempt. God does not tempt anyone. It is a test. Remember in chapter 15, he has a problem. God says, I want to be your reward. Abraham says, no. I want a child. And God has given that child. And now Abraham, God wants to see whether Abraham has matured. And he's telling, you see, remember that child that you so desperately wanted? I want him back. Are you seeing it now? I think 
today I'm not clear. <laughs> I think I'm not clear. Or oh, the topic is so difficult. Yes, these are the stories we sing. These are the stories we have sung songs about Abraham offering the son. You know. <laughs> but the stewardship in this, and I'm combining two, two topics. You know, two sessions of 15 and this one of 22. Because there is no time. So I'm combining them. You know, I'm just, uh, just introduced the one of 15 so that I can jump to 22. So that you can see where we are coming from. Otherwise I needed... You know what, I was, I was dealing in Daniel and then I thought, let me, because in the morning of how I handled Abraham, let me bring it, let me bring him again, again in his stewardship. So that you can see, this Abraham, the father of faith, he had in defect as a man, as a human being. But then as in defect, he outgrew them. That's why in the, we see, in the morning, he rise. Let us read that verse, I hear, your version. Sister Lucy, how does it put well, in verse 1 now and 2, I hear your version, how to put it? 22 years. 22 years. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. but, uh, hey, verse 3. Add in the next morning, according to that version, add the morning King James. Mm -hmm. He woke up and the sandal is donkey. Wait, wait, my sister. You pause there. When you go to chapter, chapter 13, you realize that Abraham and the 318 soldiers who went with him to the war, those are the ones who are able. So meaning if there are 318 and each one of them was married, that is uh, uh, 636. And if, if, if we say that each one of them had two children, that is another 636, that is 1272. In other words, Abraham had about 2,000 servants surrounding him. That's why in the book of uh, the Genesis 18, God says, or uh, the angel says, for I know Abraham, that shall command his children and his household after him. I know him. He, he had a big servant. The question is, why is he sandling the donkey himself? Remember my opening statement I said, as a leader, there are some things you can't delegate. Why is Abraham not delegating as a steward the sandling of the donkey? Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 No, God did not tell him how to do the process. The only thing he told him is go and offer your son. But the sandling of the donkey and that chapter, the splitting of the wood, that one, he, besides having the servants, and only taking two young men is something worthy of consideration. Abraham, that Person with more than 2,000 servants, why is he sandling the donkey himself? And why is he splitting the wood himself? Hold man. Only the two people. Le yes, let me hear from my sister at the corner. Yes, my sister. Yes. Uh huh. Sandling and splitting the wood is not offering. He did not send anyone to offer the son. I'm talking of sandling the donkey. Read your version. Read that verse 3. It's where the message is. Verse 3. Yes, my, ah, for the first time you're speaking. Yes, my brother. Welcome. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. But rising in the morning was a decision. He had fully decided, but sandling the donkey and splitting the wood is a different story. Confidence and what? Confidence and willingness. Willingness. Uh -huh. Someone else? Yes? You know, you're forgetting. I said there's some things you don't delegate when I started this. There's some things you don't delegate. Mm -hmm. At the back. 
My neighbor today, you're not talking, and you're the one who rescues me sometimes. <laughs> you know, there are some people who, when they keep quiet in a discussion, yes, my wife, let me hear my wife talking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. 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 Thank you. Uh, now you will say that uh, you have given other more Kenya because she is your wife. <laughs> but worship is so personal that you cannot delegate. And that's why he is doing it himself. Besides now, having made the decision, he wants to do it himself by doing two critical things. Standarding the donkey and splitting the wood. Are you seeing it in verse 3? Are you seeing it in verse 3? Is it in your Bible? I'm asking, when we have read it before, have you ever paused? Why is Abraham standing the donkey himself and is splitting the wood? Has it struck your mind before? No. You know, Sister Ruth is very honest. She is saying, no. I have been reading this story, but this, this bit, no. <laughs> That's being honest. So now, worship, remember stewardship is what? Worship is so personal. Why is so personal? Because the redemption is so personal. The creator, he came himself. Did he send anyone? No. So he expect you and I to do the same. That we worship him personally. This is now where I come. That is why when you listen to pastors, someone about Uza, and when you listen to uh, uh, where we are talking, my, my, my aunt asked this question of, uh, I have come to prepare the old communion alone, and they uh, uh, have come, and I thought other deacons and deaconesses would come, and they have not come. And the other churches where deacons and deaconesses of the church, they give money so that people can come and prepare the old communion, and they can come and wash the utensils of the old communion. It is all wrong. It does not matter how much money you have. If you and Deacon, if you and Deaconess come personally and prepare the Holy Communion, come personally and wash the utensils for the Holy Communion. Keep your money to yourself. Do not send money for someone who is not even a church member to come and do that holy work. Abraham did it himself. So those are the things I'm saying as a leader you cannot delegate. Have you ever thought if Jesus came and stood up there and said, Hey, you people, I love you, I love you. And then he went back. I don't know whether there would be an impact like the way he came, he took our body, he walked here, he got tired, he got hungry, he felt the pain. And there was something I was reading last evening when I left here. And he was hanging on the cross and he cried, I thirst. And they give him vinegar and he tastes, thinking it is water. And then he says, no, this is not what I wanted. Vinegar was a painkiller. He said, you know. You know why he did all these things without the delegating? Have you really understood the pain that our Savior went through to save me and you, to save you and I? Do you know? But why do you take it so casually when it comes to stewardship? Because stewardship is worship. So he needs us Personally, whether it is the effort, you remember, I think covenant number 13, when we are getting baptized, uh, while you are going to serve God with your own personal influence, you remember that? Now, whether it is uh, influence or doing whatever you do as a steward, you do it how? Personally. Personally. Worship is personal. Even if you have money, please don't delegate those items. Abraham did not delegate. An old man of over 100 years, almost 117 years, he is sandaling the donkey. He is splitting the wood. And no one questioned him because he knew this one. For him to do it personally, this is, must be a worship, and worship is always personal. He has matured such that he is not holding to the gift. He is holding to the who? Thank you! Thank you! He has matured, and I need to mature as a steward. So do you. We need to mature so that we are not interested with the gift. We are interested with who? With the giver. 
And the moment we realize this, we become excellent stewards. So that even when the fire comes, what is fire? You know, you remember those three Hebrew boys when they walked with the giver, even when they were walking in the, in the fire, did they, did they feel it? Because the giver of life was there. Daniel, when he was thrown in the den of life, is there anything that happened? Nothing. The giver was there. Abraham. He had to mature. But he had shortcomings. So when my time comes, my brother tell me, I don't want to spare other program, because before we move there. Any questions so far? Any comments so far? Because I want us to understand this topic a little bit better. Yes, my brother and my neighbor. Brother Jared, yes. Yes. Mm hmm Mm hmm Yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Thank you. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. To go back. Yes. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Mm hmm. Thank you. Although you have gone ahead of me, uh, Monty Moriah and you have gone ahead of me, but it's okay. There's no harm. Um, uh, I read, I read what she was saying, that um, the entire universe was looking at this lonely patriarch as he was walking from his place to Mount Moriah for three days, three nights, he didn't sleep. And he asked God for another sign, and God was silent. Let me ask you this question. Which was more tough for Abraham to offer Isaac or for Job to lose all the sons and daughters? Which was more tough? Do you know the story of Job? Okay, which was more painful? Yes, my brother. Why? You are right, but why? Uh -huh. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. It is more painful. You do it to yourself. Actually, it is. You know, he is looking at his own hands. Let me tell you. You, you, you see, Abraham, uh, he is looking at his own hands and saying, my own hands will slay my own son. And that one was going to haunt him for long. Job was just told, there's a pain. There is pain. But the pain of killing your own son, it's not the same as when you are told your son has been killed by someone else. Something else. This one I read uh, from Patriarchs and Prophets. She says, Abraham would move from his tent and go and look at Sarah. Sarah was sleeping so peaceful because she has a son. Then he would go to the tent of Isaac. And look at Isaac, and Isaac was sleeping so peaceful because he has a father who is defending him. Now you can see where the pain is coming from. Sarah is peaceful. She has, she has a what? A son. And the son is peaceful because he has a what? A father to defend him. <laughs> and now, Abraham, <laughs> you have, and you cannot, for this matter, you cannot involve Sarah. <laughs> This one you cannot involve. So there will be quarrel. There will be chaos in the house. There will be <laughs> issues. So now, Abraham with this and seeing the heart and even wondering, 
When I come from slaughtering my son, how will the people here, how will I face the people? What will I, what will I tell them happened to my son? So he was in this great pain. And then the Bible says, he, after three days, he lifted up his, his eyes. Why won't you understand by lifted up his, his, uh, his eyes? Meaning the guy was looking down, always praying and thinking. But as he's thinking, he is moving towards the destination of the place of the, the sacrifice. Are we together? Yes, it is painful. Yes. Remember, yesterday the topic was the steward, the worship, and the what? This was the fire of Abraham. This was the fire. And remember, it is in Isaac that the, 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 the Savior was supposed to come. So in other words, Abraham, again, with his own hands, he was cutting short his own salvation because Isaac dies. Where will the Savior come from? Because it is through the Isaac. Isaac was the son of the, the promise, not Ishmael. I think now you can see the fire that Abraham was going through. But God must test him and see if he has matured so that Abraham does not worship the gift. He worships the who? Who do we worship? Let's be very honest. You know. You know. You know who you worship. I know who I worship. And let me tell you the reason why we are going to fail as Stephen, it is because we value the gift more than the giver. That's the fact. That's the truth. Now, I want us to reach somewhere before the bell is rung. I want us to reach somewhere. It's done. Time is... Whoosh. We will reach there tomorrow. Going to be <laughs> Any question before I, I close? Yes, a short one. Thank you so much for the timely messages, but uh, I'm learning something that God is also telling us. Take now, the same way he told Abraham to take his son now. Mm -hmm. And Abraham rose the next morning mm -hmm. early in obedience. Yes. Are we rising our next morning? <laughs> members online, we want to see you tomorrow. And today the church is a little bit, uh, the members have increased. Are we rising early in the morning tomorrow? What about Sabbath? What time do you come here? Do you rise early in the morning on Sabbath? You know, that's the question he is raising. He's a member of this church. He knows how we drag our feet. Uh, when it is raining, what time do you get to work? When it is raining, what time do you get to church? Let me tell you a short one. I, I was preaching in Juba, and it was raining every day. Of course, as a preacher, they came to pick me from the house to the church. But then, when I was there, there came two young men. Two young men! They didn't have a means of coming from their house to the church. What they did, they took a polythene paper and put their clothes and they walked under the rain. When they came to church, they changed. I was challenged to the core. <laughs> you can't say amen when I was that much challenged. I was challenged to the core. And I wondered, if the vehicle was not picking me, would I have done what these young men have done? Are you seeing the faith of people? That country... You preach till 7 in the, in the evening and the church is full. No one wants to go home. Of course, you don't uh, be in temper. But those boys, even today, it rings in my mind. I saw that picture and even preaching, I didn't have the strength when I was preaching. I didn't have the strength because I was asking God, would I have done it? So when it rains, what time do you come to church? You ponder. Let's pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Abraham, challenges me whenever I read these stories. Yes, he had his um, low moments, but the high moments have superseded the low moments. No wonder you say you are God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I pray that I be put in that faith of our father of faith, Abraham. Bless us. Let us rise early in the morning in obedience to your commandment for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.